Okay, bar cords. Uh, I was going to take some notes and do a better job at this, but uh, we'll just see what happens. <clears throat> There's really no magic bullet. Uh, like I said before, you just got to practice like crazy, and, and they seem... <laughs> They seem so freaking hard at first too. It's it's ridiculous, uh, and I would say that you know if you can if you can learn some bar chords in six months, I mean that would be would be awesome. But you know realistically, practice every day. I mean it's probably going to be you know probably going to be about a year. But I mean really before you can really play them. Um, but as far as what little bit of advice I can give you. Uh, I've heard, I went and watched some other videos on advice on playing bar chords and stuff, and I hear some crazy stuff. Uh, like, one of the things that I hear a lot, or that I, that I seen, was uh, really experienced players trying to tell beginners that they don't need to press down really hard on the strings, that, oh, if you're using that much force, you're doing it wrong. Well, that's bullshit. When you're a beginner and you're trying to play the bar chords, I mean, you're str you should be struggling, trying really hard to press those strings down because there's a muscle, and it's right in here. I don't know what it's called. I mean, I guess you call it the bar chord muscle. It's not developed yet, and it's like lifting weights. You've got to exercise that muscle and build that up so that it has the strength to press down on those strings. The reason why the really experienced players say, Oh, you just need to do this and roll your finger up and blah, blah, blah. It's because it doesn't feel like they're pressing down. But like, when I make that chord, I'm pressing down so lightly that that's not taking any effort. But that's because I've played the chord a bazillion times. And, and I have that, that's built up. But if you're a beginner, you don't have that. So it is going to be painful. You're going to, you're going to have, uh, it's going to ache in that part of your hand or and maybe even over here uh, where you're, uh, these fingers should depend on uh, you know what chord you're trying to play but they're gonna they're gonna ache and and that's just kind of part of it um, at the, also um, whenever I play a lot of bar chords I mean my hand will get tired like if I play like two or three songs in a row that's just nothing but constant bar chords it kind of wears my hand out, and a lot of other guitar players are like that too. I mean, love playing them. They're, they're to me, they're more, in a way, they're more fun than open chords. I mean, I just, I, I really enjoy them. Uh, but they, you know, just if you're, especially if it's a song like, which that's just mostly, I'm playing power chords, but that's just constant. Especially when you have to move a lot, let up and release and move and clamp back down that can really wear your hand out so that's something that may really never go away there's always going to be a little discomfort but it will get much much better with time i mean once you build up that muscle your that part of your hands it's not really going to ache that much anymore so that it just takes some time and i do think because you are developing a muscle i mean yeah there's some muscle memory here as far as knowing you know where to put your fingers on the strings and things like that but I do think that it might be okay to just rest every couple of weeks. I, I used to, I would not, I mean, I would never not play the guitar for a day. But I think there's some merit to that. I think if you're trying to learn some really difficult chords and your hand can just be wore out and you don't really know it, sleep on it, take a day off, take a weekend off and come back to it. I mean, obviously I encourage everybody to pick up the guitar every single day, even if it's only for 15 minutes. Well, I tell people, it's what I do. And if I pick it up for five minutes, it's better than nothing, you know. But I think that it's okay, especially when you're really trying hard to learn something, to just take a take a day or two and come back. Uh, and because I know that's helped me in the past, that hand comes back stronger and better sometimes. So um, you've probably already heard it, but I'll just say it anyway. Uh, when you're trying to make the bar chord, if you just put your finger right in the middle of the fret and press down it's not really going to work. Um, there's some chords that you can kind of, if it's like a, you know, if I'm only using one finger over here, I mean, yeah, I've kind of got it a little more centered just so it maybe sounds a little bit better, but for, for mostly all bar chords, your finger is going to be, I don't know how well you can see this, but 
your finger's going to be completely on its side almost, and you're, you're kind of rolling it up. Roll it, if, if you can see my thumb here, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of rolling that up to put that, put that tension on there, uh, you know, subconsciously, I mean, and so, and my finger's curved, it's not, it's not straight, and when I make, this is the one that's based on an E major, that one for me, you can see that I've actually got finger that's hanging over the top here, because I'm using this really fat part of my finger to make that chord. That chord was really easy for me as I remember picking it up really quick. But uh, conversely, the, the P minor was so tough. And it's the same shape, it's just moved over one string. So, I, I mean, I'm sure it's different for everybody. Um, you'll you'll kind of get calluses on the side here. I mean, I didn't even really realize that I, that I had them. But so if you feel the strings kind of digging in a little, I mean that's that's normal. After a while, that'll kind of that'll kind of go away. Uh, it won't, won't really bother you anymore. Um, another good thing, I'm just throwing random stuff out here. If you can find a song that has a bar chord in it, but maybe doesn't have, uh, it's not constant bar chords. That's a good way to practice too, because then you can still play the song and you run into that that one trouble spot and then kind of pick it back up. You know, so, um, in, you know, songs in the key of G, they're going to have a B minor. That, w that would be something to consider because there's, you know, there's a lot of different songs in the key of G. And, and, um, and you can find them where maybe the B minor is only during a bridge or something like that. You know, um, one song that I've told people, beginners, is, uh, had a bad day again it's got very little it's got a bar chord but it's like and you're gonna start on an E minor and then you move it down so you know or you can even practice that like there's lots of songs where you can you can make this these open chords with, with using your pinky and just letting this finger kind of hang out up here and then scoot them down just not so much the A minor shape, but you'll see songs where you play E and you might scoot it down to like an A or something. That's really common. There's a lot of rock songs that do that. So that will that's a good way. And you'll still have to work on your on your bar, but that shape will you know uh, like basically I'm just trying to say find find a song that has you know a bar chord maybe once every chorus or once a verse or something and, and just do that because I think it's more fun to practice a song than it is to just sit and practice chords. I mean, I mean, I'm not saying you won't gain anything by steadily practicing a chord over and over, but you know, you probably get bored of tears before it's all said and done. Uh, the bar chord shapes that I would probably concentrate on, uh, obviously the the A minor, the A the the A minor shape. The E major shape, um, and then another one. This is like I had a lot of beginners ask me about this. Like they're playing guitar, and then all of a sudden one day, like a year later, they're like, what about B? <laughs> Where's B? Why haven't I heard of B? Uh, and there's, I remember when I was going through this, I was like, well, how do you play it? I mean, there's, I see people doing it different ways, and I didn't really understand it, and it makes a lot of sense now, but I just I don't want to get off too much of a tangent, but uh, to play a B, I mean, there's several, there's other B B majors, but the one that you're probably thinking of, we would take an A, an A, which, you know, A, and and use our, our pinky and scoot it down and then just go ahead and, okay, that is, that chord's a mother. I mean, that's, it's hard. And it's impossible down here. I mean, I can't. My, my fingers just won't won't hardly fit. Uh, so you won't see a lot of people playing B major that way. Um, you'll see a lot of people playing it like this, which is which is fine. I mean, I call it the double barrel, and it's good. Uh, it I don't prefer to play play it that way. Uh, a whole lot just because it's not as comfortable to me um, I mean I will sometimes if I'm wanting to 
let the some of those strings ring out. But a lot of times when you see B major in a song, it's a uh, I don't know what the deal is with it. I just I guess because it just works out, it's easier to play it that way and it sounds okay. But you'll see um, artists uh, actually they're not playing a B major. What they're doing is they're playing a B5, a power chord. You know, a power chord is not really a chord because it's only got two notes. I don't care what anybody says. Be a chord's got to have three notes, and a, a power chord only has two. It's it's a, the one and the five. It's a fifth interval. And these other two notes are, they're the same note. If I'm playing all three, the other two, they're the same note. They're just an octave apart. So you really only need those two. And they're the bass note portion of it. And you just, you see that a lot in songs in, like the, in the key of E. And, and you'll have a B in there. And for, I mean, I don't know, for whatever reason, you people just do that. So uh, if you're having trouble playing B or if maybe... It's not sounding completely right, you know. Try that the B5, the power chord version, and I'm playing, I'm playing it like that. I'm not barring anything up here. I'm just touching. I'm fretting that that B note right there, and then I've got I've got these two fingers down. I mean, it's just a power chord. But there's there's some songs where if you listen to it you'll that makes sense like uh, only God knows why it's just I'm I'm only really playing the bass notes I mean I could play the beat the whole thing or I could play it but I wouldn't really even I wouldn't want to hear. If I was in a band, maybe, but when I'm playing it by myself, I just, you know, I want those low notes to ring out. So there, there's a lot of songs like that, and and the and you can always play B. Um, you can take this this old E major shape, and there's your F, and just kind of scoop that here. You got A sharp, and there's your B. So you could play that if you were having trouble with this. I mean, they basically. You know, pretty much sound sound the same. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of good shapes to you know. Um, minor sevenths and um, seventh chords in general. Um, and then you, any open shape you can you can turn into a bar chord. But this the G major shape is just, if you can do it, more power to you because it's freaking it is a freaking mother man. Like I can't even. I don't know how. I've practiced it for years and I, st I st can't quite do it. I guess I could play it, but it. Ah, oh, man, that's a tough one. The the C version. It's it's not as hard, but it, you don't you don't see it in the D version. You don't see in songs very much either. Um, but any of those open chord shapes, you can scoot down and bar them. Uh, within within reason, you know, like I said, the G major, I mean, I guess there's probably somebody, I'm sure Zach Wilde or somebody can do it, but, uh, and I practice it all the time, so maybe I will one day, but, uh, they're all good to know, but that A, that A minor and the E major that you're going to scoot down and bar, and then that, that somehow doing your B, those are the ones that are really going to liberate you, that let you play all of the bazillion songs that you probably can't play right now. Um, and, and about about uh, using bar chords I mean sometimes when you're learning a song and, and if you go look the tabs up or even if you listen to it in the recording you may not really know whether they're playing open chords or they're playing bar chords and so you know you're kind of, it's kind of up to you sometimes how you want to how you want to handle that uh, so I know y'all are kind of into classic rock. Um, um, up on Cripple Creek, I don't. I play it. A lot of people will play uh, the open chords and 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 I play. I just play it the whole song. I mean, I'm basically playing a power chord with that, with that D5, but. I'm, 
I, that's just how I play it because I think when I'm playing it by myself, it sounds better like that and it's funner to play. Um, but at the same time, like during the E part of the song, when he plays E major, I mean, I don't, I don't, play, I don't play that that E major. I play that one. So it's, I guess, personal preference, but just experiment and always know that they're there because sometimes. Especially if you, if, maybe if you haven't been playing that long, you get stuck into thinking about the open chords, and you don't you don't realize that that a lot of times the artist is they're not playing those they're playing they're playing a, a bar chord version of that, and it just it sounds different or it can sound better. Um, one thing about uh, about the bar chords and this may, may be one reason why I like them so much because. Um, it's a lot easier to uh, sometimes it's easier to do the rhythm part because uh, you can change the pressure on that bar and and help to get a better a better sound um, a better sound that way. Uh, I'm slapping the strings a little, but I'm I'm letting up and pushing down to, to help get that sound. And if I if I played that with an, with these open chords, I, I can't get that sound. I mean, that don't sound bad. I mean, I know the song, but it, you know if. I mean, to me, to me, that's just, it sounds better. And, and I, I mean, so, like I said, you, you, long story short, you just kind of have to, to play with it and always know that you've got that option once you've been, once you're liberated, you know, playing, playing bar chords. I mean, there's a lot of songs that I play with bar chords that other people just, they don't even do it because whatever reason you know I just think it's fun to play them I mean <laughs> um, I, I was uh, I was watching somebody play uh, the song Hey Y'all by Outkast and they played some open chords and I said well I really like to play that song and I, I sat down with it and I play I kind of play along with the recording and, and then I, I played it with with bar chords and I, I like you know me personally like the way it sounded better so um, Another thing that's kind of cool is like sometimes, um, in this, you know, if I'm playing by myself, I will, I maybe I'll play some bar chords, and then in a certain part of the song, I may, you know, a bridge or a slow spot or something, I may switch over to the open chords to get it to get a different effect. So you've always got that too. Um, it's, as far as your equipment, uh, light strings, good action. Um, it'll help some, but it's uh, it's still going to be a booger. Uh, I mean, you you can put tens on your acoustic. Uh, it's getting pretty pretty low. I I don't mind. I like ten. A lot of acoustic players don't don't like those, but I think <clears throat> I play with elevens. Uh, but I, I played with tens and that's fine. I mean, you're not going to accidentally bend a, a ten on an acoustic. On an electric, if you put some nines on there and you're trying to learn bar chords, you're, you're going to keep accidentally bending, you know, trying to simulate it. But you, you're you're going it, to... It's going to sound a little bit out of tune. Because you're like that. Because you're actually bending those strings you don't realize it. So... You know, with beginners, I mean, I would say, you know, well, you want a light string, but you don't, you don't want to go too light. But tens on the acoustic, tens on the electric, probably either one of those. Elevens on the acoustic, they're not too, they're not too beefy. No, probably definitely stay away from your twelves and don't even think about the thirteens while you're trying to learn bar chords. They're, those are those are rough, rough on your hands and not going to make it any easier. Um, Anytime you change string height, it's my old lecture. Your, or anytime that you change your string 
gauge, you're changing the tension on the neck. So if you have your action set up for 12s and you go and throw some tens on there, uh, that's gonna it's gonna change it. It might be a little too low. You might might start buzzing on you. Uh, you can adjust the truss rod yourself. I mean, I'm not a guitar worker owner. I'm a guitar player, and I'm not even really good one of them. So it's, it's kind of my disclaimer. But your on most guitars, or acoustics anyway, your truss rod is going to be right in here, and you can probably just loosen a couple of strings and get you an Allen wrench in there. And, and I I wouldn't turn it more than an eighth or a quarter of a turn at a time, and I'd play it for a day or two and decide. And you know, so you can you can adjust the tension on that uh, truss rod to get your neck to relax or to or to gain some tension back if you've got some buzz going on from strings being too low. I mean that's something that you can kind of do yourself. Uh, you're not going to break anything. I mean, I, you know, I, I, like I said, I wouldn't turn it very much at one time. I mean, I would turn it a little and then if it needs it a day or two later, turn it, give it time to move and then turn it a little bit more. But most of them it's going to be right, you can't see it, but it'll be right up under there. It'll be Allen head. Um, I couldn't tell you whether they're metric or standard now, but I, mean, I guess it depends on the guitar. But in some acoustic mine, it's got a cover up here on this one, and it's up at the top. But a lot of electrics, it'll it'll be up, you know, pretty much all electrics. It's going to be right up there where you adjust it at. And so that that could help you a, a little bit, but it's it's not going to be a miracle cure. I mean, I would say in the grand scheme of things, you're, you know. It, might make it like five percent easier or something it's not it's just not gonna make a huge difference you know so anyway uh i don't know how much that helped i know I, I wish i knew what to say to make it better but I, I, I know that learning them just sucks so bad and it takes so much time and but i i promise you when you learn them it's it's so liberating and you really, I think once you learn bar chords, you can pretty much say you're out of the beginner phase and you're into like a novice, you know, I mean, uh, you're, you're, you're moving into a whole nother world. And along the way of learning the bar chords, you're going to get better at rhythm, you're going to get better at open chords and all that other stuff too, so you're still practicing everything else that you've already learned at the same time. So, anyway, uh, I sincerely hope this helped, even though I know it, I mean, it, probably was like throwing a baby at a freight train but anyway uh thanks for thanks for listening to me ramble and maybe i'll uh have something have something better to say next time <laughs> cheers